How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with an editorial. Another Massive Beer editorial. Um, yeah, third one. Uh, done two so far. Uh, first one was on IPAs and why their king should have fucked Mountain. Uh, number two was actually um, about marketing and, and beer marketing in general. And... Um, Kind of ha was, uh, wasn't sure what I wanted to do for three. I, had a, I have a laundry list of different subjects I wanted to cover and um, wasn't quite sure. Um, but there was one on that list I wanted to cover down the line, which was YouTube and my opinions on YouTube. And um, last week, an article actually came out in Men's Journal um, that talked about beer tube. Or they called it brew tube, even though that's more of like a home brewer thing. So hopefully, all the home brewers on YouTube didn't freak out, but uh, <laughs> beer tubers. And, uh, you know. People are talking about it. People kind of have been mentioning it, so I figured I'd kind of, kind of stay on subject, stay on topic, and kind of cover it this week. My opinions on YouTube, beer, and YouTube, brew tube, beer tube, whatever you want to call it, um, and what it's about. Just kind of a generic synopsis. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna, um, it's gonna be a lot about um, the viability or the the um, you know, hang on, what's the word I'm looking using here? Viability of beer tube. Um, as an outlet for beer information. That's kind of what I'm going to be touching on here. Probably touch on a bunch of different su subjects. End it with a little bit of kind of hate, because I love hating on shit, so i got a list of beer things I hate on YouTube. Uh, so anyway, that's what we're going to be covering today. Um, editorials. First, going to knock that off. This is my opinion. I'm not talking about, like, you know what I mean, facts here. I'm going to drop what I believe, what are facts, and, what, and then what I believe to be true in my brain. A lot of opinion-based stuff. So if you do disagree with something, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know. Either way, let's have some fun. Anyway, beer tube. We're going to refer to it as that from here. I actually hate that term, but it means something, so I'll use it. Uh, beer tube. What is it? Uh, people talking about beer on YouTube. Um, it's been around for a while now. Um, do you know what I mean? Like that, uh, the article touched on briefly kind of like where it was born. Um, you know, one of the OGs, uh, Chris from Beer Geek Nation, was one of the people talking to the magazine about it. Uh, he was on there. They actually talked to Darwin as one of the uh, kind of, um, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say newer, um, but one of the more popular guys on YouTube that's been doing stuff and gaining a pretty uh, hefty ground base. And then they actually talked to um, Chauncey from um, All, uh, All Things Beer 510. Um, newer school guy. Um, brings a little bit different perspective. West Coast, hip-hop stuff in the scene. They talked to him. But then at the end of the list, they kind of covered uh, channels that you should check out. And I was lucky enough to be one of them. Um, and they covered a couple different people. You know what I mean? Niche um, and, um, you know, Joe's Arcade. A couple different people. And kind of touched on the, the kind of all the corners of the beer tube. Not necessarily everybody should be involved. You know, they left out Peter from Master Hobbits. They left out Hobzine, a bunch of people that I, you know, watched their reviews and think they're pretty good. But they, you know, it's weird. They kind of got like a nice kind of like um, um, uh, mix. And I actually wrote this down here. A uh, mix of, uh, of of all the different corners of uh, of the beer tube community. Because they got beer, like Chris from Beer Geek Nation's OG Darwin, which is like, he's like the Yelp of, of, of beer tube. You know what I mean? He's the Yelper for years. So he'll tell you that. So it's a very kind of Yelp thing. And there's me, the asshole of beer tube. Um, all things new, um, Beer 510. He's the new school, like I said, hip hop. Uh, they did Greg's beer reviews as like the kind of you know Olive Garden uh, you know every man kind of guy, crap beer temple the like yuppie corner of things, uh, the Wilkie uh, which is like the hipster version of stuff, Taste Niche which is like the Euro stylish stuff, uh, Joe's Arcade which is like that kind of laid back Cali style stuff, and the Four Brewers a technical kind of side of things. So they actually it seems like they're very kind of. Um, um, strategic about who they picked out in that article. But um, but the article, like I said, basically started a conversation, brought up a world that, you know, a lot of people out there watching know about because you obviously watch these things, but a lot of people didn't. So I figured I'd kind of make a more expansive kind of idea of what I think uh, Beer Tube's about. First things first, I got known a while ago, do a little history of myself. I got it not too long ago. It was about four years ago, I think now. I don't remember. Um, you know, was a pretty big introvert, got into... Um, you know, didn't really go out much as far as beer kind of stayed within, you know, my core friends. It was just only, like, beer friend-wise. It was only, like, one, three or four people. Started going to the bottle shooter, stuff like that. Started to meet some more people. And um, my cynical, douchey, assholey self uh, bumped into uh, Joe uh, from NEPA Beer Reviews. He used to do that. Now he's a brewer. And he was doing beer reviews. And I said, if that guy's doing it, I could fucking do it. And that kind of lit something. And I started doing it, you know, and kind of learned along the way. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, 
have changed my format over the years, have changed production, have changed formatting, have changed the whole line. We'll go over, touch on a lot of that stuff along the ways. And then um, kind of got here today. I'm lucky enough to where people actually watch my stuff. Um, I have a decent following, awesome fan base. Um, so, yeah, um, these are my opinions. So take that for what it's worth. Um, uh, there's a couple different things that come to mind to me when it comes to actual, like, beer tube in general. The biggest thing for me, moving forward, and in general, is, uh, you know what I mean, legit, being legit, being uh, being viable, having beer tube be viable as an outlet for people to get information about beer. Um, whether it be, you know what I mean, people just getting into it, people have been in for a while, even like on an upper level from like magazines looking towards it, or, you know what I mean, brewers kind of using it as an information to get things. And that's kind of, it's kind of a weird world because it's kind of a wild, wild west when it comes to beer. Um, in a way that it's a bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit more uh, singular, a bit more jar, jarring um, than, uh, than written, um, short form written word about beer um you know people talking about beer have been around for a while you know what i mean michael jackson everybody knows about him he's been around doing it forever there's been other people have been around for a long time blue bryce and people like that but it's you know michael jackson wrote a lot but he's best known for his video but he's wrote a lot and a lot of that stuff has been written word long form written word kind of like a soliloquies about beer um then once the kind of you know the internet took off beer started to get to the point where it was you know, your sites popped up, your aggregate sites, Rate Beer um, and uh, Beer Advocate are your two big ones. And, and what you ended up getting there was this kind of floodgates of people kind of sharing their opinions about beer. Um, but what you ended up getting in that, you do have some people to kind of write super long form stuff on there. Um, but what you do you tend to get a lot on there is is quick hits of information on beer, um, ratings, um, and quick quips, uh, this sucks, this is good. Not much as far as constructive criticism, unless you deep dive on those sites looking for what you want. What those sites end up doing is end up, um, end up, uh, giving you kind of an idea of, of a, a general idea about beer. Unless, like I said, you, there's some thoughtful stuff, some really good information in those sites, but people tend to use them as kind of like a generic aggregate of beer. Um, it tends to be like, okay, it's four and a half stars, or it's 98 out of 99, or it's 65 out of whatever style. They end up giving you kind of a quick snapshot of what a beer uh, is thought about across the board. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I'm not going to lie. I've used it. Not necessarily to give the end-all, be-all judgment about a beer, but if I was really on a fence about a beer, and beer's expensive, I've used them. Just get a baseline be like, this one's a red hot dumpster fire. Across the board, I might skip it. Not gonna lie, I've used it for that. So um, I think as a whole, like brewers and the legitimacy and kind of viability of the sites has, have been, you know, I don't want to say uh, touted, but at the same time, there is kind of like a check and balance when it comes to that. And that's the thing I think that tends to be missing a bit on YouTube is a check and balance when it comes to that stuff. There are a lot of people that actually do beer reviews on YouTube, um, and while some are more popular than other others. They can all be found, you know what I mean, especially if somebody's looking for a specific beer. Um, but the thing that happens with YouTube, it, it tends to be singular. It tends to be a long form of discussion. Sure, people try to keep beer reviews tight and confined. You know, people do that. You know, Darwin's good at it. Chris is known for doing that. I am not known for doing that. Um, and people try to keep things tight and try to keep things short. But what you end up doing there is you're not aggregating the score you're you're looking at a beer through someone's specific eyes and and what that does is it makes it more intimate i mean as intimate as youtube can be it's not porn hub you know what i mean it's youtube uh the uh, as intimate it gets a bit more intimate because you're, you're dealing with a singular subject talking about a beer and that tends to be a bit more impactful for the positive or negative um that's kind of where credentials tend to come in when it's stuff who are we to talk about beer in general? Um, you know, almost everybody in the beer tube community, they are not BGCP judges. Not that I think it matters because I think that shit's kind of antiquated unless you're a home brewer at this point because um, beer is just blurring the lines across the board when it comes to styles. That's a whole other fucking subject, but you know what I mean? Or, you are you know, most people aren't Cicerones, and if they are, they're just server Cicerones, which is more about how to talk about a beer in a generalized form and serve it in a way that doesn't do whatever. Um, who are Who is what? 
when it comes to beer and, 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 and the credentials they have to talk about it. Um, and that's kind of where, like, things start to kind of waver. Or it's not necessarily waver, but it kind of divide a wedge between, you know, YouTube being viable or not viable when it comes to a legitimate source for, for beer information. But, you know, like, anybody can make a, a YouTube channel and talk about beer. Um, a lot of people don't know anything about fucking beer. I'm not one to sit here and say I know every fucking single thing about beer, um, even though I act like it. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of people who know fucking nothing. And they are out there giving their opinion, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You want to do it. You want to do whatever you want to do, as long as you're not hurting babies and dogs and women. And more power to your guys, too, because guys matter. Um... There's nothing wrong with that, but then there, that is a singular platform. Those people have that, that, that um, stage to sit there and actually talk about, you know what I mean, beer as a whole. And then you have some people, those beer, uh, some of those people that are, you know, they have quite a big following. There's people out there that talk about, you know, you know, uh, Natty Light uh, on the same level as they would like a Belgian Dark. You know what I mean? Like those. So there is this weird kind of juxtaposition of like, okay, there's people really giving good information about beer on on YouTube, but at the same time, there's people out there that are they're they're giving bad information about beer. Again, nothing wrong with that, but that's one of the things that kind of, in my eyes, kind of keeps. YouTube and BeerTube, a um, kind of uh, keeps it away from being like a driven, legitimate source um, about beer. That's the one of the things that um, that I actually think about a lot because it was actually brought up today. I was talking to some um, um, a, a Instagram uh, beer person from um, Florida, wrote me today, and just kind of struck up a conversation. Never. Um, talked to him really before outside of quick comments on, on Instagram and he's got a quite a bit uh, hefty following on, uh, on Instagram and he was kind of talking about like we we're talking about all this and, and he was talking about you know Instagram and how he gets all these beers and, and this and that and the other thing and I was like yeah I'm like you know I'm like it's, it's, it's a lot easier to um, do the whole you know Instagram thing because it's like you get four or five words and then a picture and then a quick rundown of what it pairs well with which is a lot of copy and paste stuff and you're done and and then he also, he said, and he's like, well, you know, not a lot of brewers watch YouTube breweries, so I don't think it's it's in the cards for me to do. And I actually think that's false. I think a lot, if not all brewers, watch YouTube. They just don't feed into it at all. They you don't um, comment, and they don't um, let you know. If you actually look at the analytics in YouTube, you can actually see a lot of times where people are coming from. Um, f from where they're coming from to watch videos. And uh, as well, it's a lot of brewery stuff. Uh, I've had people from... And a lot of it's not just brewery places. It's all, like, internalized emails. You can actually see, like, okay, this person's emailing this around their company. And then people are clicking on the link and coming out and looking into... Uh, looking at a beer review. So it, it is, it, it's watched. Um, but I, I don't think it's it, it's it's... It's a weird format. It's a weird format because I I be, don't believe brewers and um, in like um, uh, larger format like magazines and stuff that really respect it in any form or fashion. Is that a, is that you know is there grounds for that? Sure. Like I said, there's a lot of bullshit information when it comes to YouTube, but at the same time. When someone knows what to talk about, someone's doing it right. I think it actually goes the other direction, where it's more than viable. And it comes down to uh, I'll kind of end end this on a little bit of a subject with that, but uh, about um, the new versus the old, or I guess the future of of beer tube and where beer's going and things like that. But back to the core subject, which is basically talking about kind of like a lot of bad information about out there, a lot of good information out there, but it's a matter of like kind of giving credence to people on, on YouTube and, and beer tube in general. It's kind of a weird one. You almost have to you almost have to filter it yourself. You actually and this is the problem with today's world, is that you have to actually pay attention. Um, you have to list watch, listen, understand what people are talking about, and filter out the bullshit for yourself. So there's no easy way to be like, okay, who should you watch? And that's kind of where I'm getting to. Who should you watch on YouTube? Do your homework. Watch the people uh, you know what I mean? Resonate with them, like talk to them, listen to what they have to say, understand what they're trying to say, and if they're feeding bullshit, then just kind of filter those people out, 
and then just focus on the good stuff. Because just like anything on the internet, there's a bunch of bullshit. And since there is no kind of aggregate score for YouTube, it's hard to kind of kind of do that. I guess you would say fo followers would be an aggregate score, but there's some people out there that have a ton of followers that, you know, aren't the most brightest bulb in a bunch either. So, again, that's not an end-all, be-all when it comes to that stuff, but... You know, when it comes to the whole YouTube thing, trying to get your foot into the door as far, uh, as, far as uh, credibility um, um, with, you know, beer in general and people that are into beer, it's a tough road to hoe. Um, combine that with it, beer being an infinitely subjective thing. You know what I mean? Beer is a co weird combination of science and art. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like cooking had a baby with math. You know, um, it, it's weird. Um, and that, and that there is bad beer. There is badly made beer. There's beer that is wrongly made. There is beer that has gone sideways. There is recipes that are horrible. So there is a one plus one equals two format when it comes to beer. But at the same time, there is the, you know what I mean? The artistic side of things, which is this beer is beautiful. You know what I mean? This beer is made in a way that just turns me on. That just speaks to me. You know what I mean? I can't tell you how many times I've had a beer and I'm, with somebody and they're like i hate this and i'm like you are fucking crazy you know what i mean so you're taking a one plus one equals pretty and trying to make that make sense um so you take this kind of combination of something uh, that's kind of teetering on viability because of uh, whether it be watered down from misinformation or people don't know what we're talking about or just the fact that it's kind of like not purposely omitted as far as viability from you know magazines or websites or brewers and whatnot um, it, it's kind of a weird road to hoe. You know what I mean? Um, the subject, subjectivity thing um, kind of bothered me for quite a bit. When I actually first got into YouTube, um, I scored everything like everybody else. I was a 1 to 100 person. Why did I pick that? I don't fucking know. I just picked it. And I went with it for a while, and I was like, hmm, this is like a 91, maybe a 92. Or I'd be like, this is this. And then um, it always bothered me, though. It always kind of bothered me in the back of my head because I'd never really gotten got the... I get it on a personal like rating kind of scale, but I never really, I never really got the whole rating as an absolute thing because it's a subjective thing with an absolute thing. Even if it's an internal score, it's an absolute thing, and um, and it was weird, weird for a long time. So I don't know. It was about a year and a half ago, two years ago. I just jumped off that and I said, "Fuck! I'm just going to talk about whether I love something or I love it, uh, or if I don't love it." Um, and for me, that made a lot more sense. You know what I mean? There's almost everybody out there still scores stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm saying about what I enjoy. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me, but if that's how people want to internalize things, that's fine. But um, it just made m much more sense on a subjectivity front because it, it was there were still people out there I know I would give a 70 or I would give a 90 and people are being the opposite end of the spectrum. And it just wouldn't make sense to me. So you're taking like this thing that was kind of teetering on viability, and then you have this thing that kind of is born in the world of subjectivity, and then you combine it with, and this is when you're starting to get up there and starting to talk about people, um, kind of, I wouldn't say making it more than a hobby. I guess it's more than a hobby for me, and I guess it's more of a hobby for people that really get into it. And there's a lot of, like, dashes of transparency that, that need to be dealt with, too. Like, um... A lot of people send me beer. I would say more people send me beer as viewers than actual breweries now. I used to actually go out of my way to kind of write breweries every now and then. And they would send me stuff, and they still get stuff every now and then. But a lot of what I get is from actual viewers. So I don't actually feel, like, weird about the whole transparency thing anymore. But I used to go out of my way to do unboxings um, for breweries or to mention that a brewery set gave me stuff. I still do. Um, but I think I've gotten to a point now where, like, that's pretty much a non-issue for at least me. With the whole transparency thing, like, I know some people do get beers, and they tend to be a little bit more favorable, a little skew, a little bit more kind of influenced um, when it comes to beer, uh, if they've gotten it from somebody, which is kind of poo-poo. Um, and that's, again, where a thing where you have to kind of watch and kind of pay attention to what's going on with certain people when it comes to beer, um, that it seems like everything's always kind of on the up and up, I guess you would put it. Um, you don't want any anybody to be too biased. I mean, if somebody's in a good mood 
and somebody gives them the beer, they're obviously going to feel a little bit better about the beer. Not necessarily, maybe even consciously, but subconsciously. But it, it, it just kind of rounds out the whole, like, for me, the credential viability of things, the uh, subjectivity and transparency. It's a weird kind of mixture when it comes to YouTube. Um, because of that singularity, when you actually tune into YouTube and you watch somebody, it's not an aggregate site combined with, is this person know what they're talking about, combined with, well, if this person knows what they're talking about, it's just what they fucking think, because we're dealing with art, stripping the whole BJCP, good or bad thing out of this, the picture, combined with, you know what I mean, the uh, transparency of what's what when it comes to actual beer. Um, so that kind of gets to the point where viability. Um I, like I said, touched earlier, I know brewers watch uh, beer tube. I know it. Um, some actually comment. Um, some don't. Um, typically, they always comment when it's good. <laughs> they don't want, you know, especially in other mediums, I typically get a lot of comments because I cross post from uh, YouTube to Facebook, Twitter, Twitter to Instagram. Get a lot of comments on there. You know what I mean? Rarely, if you post bad shit, do you get any kind of comments and stuff like that. But they're typically, you know what I mean, um, paying attention. Put it that way. So the viability portion of the thing, when it comes to brewers, and when it comes, like I said, more, I guess you would say, on the same level as magazines, I know it exists, and it's a weird kind of road that's being hoed um, to get to the point where it actually more people actually pay attention to it. And it's getting to the point now where I think it's starting to get like sports. Um, sports are getting um, as far as combining all that stuff from your websites. Um, like Great Beer and Beer Advocate and um, Untapped and all those kind of things. It's starting to get to the point where it's starting to bleed itself into there. Video is a cool format. Um, and oddly enough, I actually like written word reading more than I like watching. Um, I actually prefer listening now more than I like watching. Um, but in sports, sports used to be a, a, a very kind of listen, read um, what's the word, hobby? Entertainment point, I guess, for people. Entertainment point, that sounds good. Uh, it used to be read, listen. You know what I mean? You listen to radio, you read columns. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know, when TV went around, radio kind of went away a little bit, and then kind of written word kind of became the big portion of the show. But you're also talking about, like, this is before the internet and mobile phones and things like that. And it seems like somewhere that kind of flipped to where, you know what I mean, then the written word in video started to kind of even out, I guess it would say more. But then you had the audio kind of start to creep in. And now it seems like kind of written word in sports is almost a, not a forgotten thing, but it's it, it's becoming more niche. Um, and it, it seems like audio in video is becoming much more of a more prominent kind of platform when it comes to these things. You're seeing it with podcasts. Podca podcasts are by far and away one of the largest avenues, whether it be sports or, you know, food, drink, whatever. Um, but with YouTube being a visual medium, being an actual, like, video format of a thing that is visual, beer is a very visual thing, when you're talking about it in general... I think it's actually starting to drift to where it makes more sense to the public. Um, so I think it's more not necessarily that beer tube... Well, no, that's true. Beer, it's becoming more uh, refined, I guess you would say. that. I guess there's more people doing it that are doing um, a, a bit of a, a more... Um, I don't want to say homeworky kind of job about it, but doing it with a little bit more kind of... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is... Um, legitimacy, um, a little bit more effort, a little bit more, um, a little bit more give a shit ability. There's a word for you. Um, that is kind of getting to a point where it's making a little bit more sense. And you're seeing that a lot. You're seeing a lot more videos pop up when it comes to beer. Um, you're starting to see a lot of magazines kind of do kind of one-off things about beer. You're starting to see a lot of uh, breweries do a lot of things when it comes to video about beer, talk about beer. So it, it's a weird thing to where the whole YouTube thing, especially even before I got into it, but when I first got into it, it seems like it was a little bit more kind of like, not looked down upon, but yeah, whatever, that's kind of a weird thing to where it's being a little bit more accepted when it comes to like, you know what I mean, breweries, magazines, things like that. Um, let's see. When you stack it up against all the other avenues, where does it sit, though? Still kind of down there. 
You know what I mean? Your beer advocates of the world, your rape beers of the world, up until last week. I mean, you know, rape beer just kind of, kind of in cahoots at AB and Bev. So that shit's gonna take a fucking left turn in a dumpsterville eventually. Beer advocate will hold strong. Those are still your kind of that and untapped. I mean, untapped's made huge fucking leaps and bounds when it comes to that stuff. But um, like those, those are still gonna be the king when it comes to actually talking about beer for quite quite a while um again the american public or public in general um intention span is super super short you know what i mean like when i make a six minute video people get pissed you should see what happens when i make all my 10 minute videos and, and you know when they're three minutes long people barely hold on um so you know what i mean those formats of people actually getting information as fast as humanly possible are still kind of paramount when it comes to actually getting information um so I mean, it's it's definitely not there as far as is is a a easily digestible everyday portion of the show when it comes to kind of beer and things like that, but it's changing. Like I said, I, I see the and I see different avenues embracing it. I guess you could say just from sitting from where I am, and I'm far and away not the most popular uh, beer tuber out there. But I can see the changes kind of being embraced by different avenues that normally didn't want to embrace it. There was actually breweries that wouldn't even, like, you know what I mean, kind of acknowledge what's going on now when it comes to um, YouTube and things like that. So it seems like it's kind of gaining momentum. So I guess that leads me to the, like, the future of YouTube when it comes to actual, like, uh, beer tube and all that kind of stuff. I think it eventually is going to get to the point where a lot of people are going to start doing a lot of their things on YouTube when it comes to beer. I see almost all, exclusively a lot of the podcasts end up becoming kind of video podcasts to where you're going to pretty much see pretty much video hand in hand with everything that goes on. So it's it's almost like it's going to marry all into one big thing. You're going to have your podcast kind of just marry into your uh, beer reviews, beer tube and all that stuff and become one thing. Written words always going to be there. It's always a beautiful thing to actually write a, a great column about anything, beer or otherwise. So that's not going on your own any anytime soon. And there's kind of a romantic thing about words. And like I said, I'm probably a bit more of a written word guy than I'm a, definitely a big more of a written word guy than I am a video YouTube guy. I'm more of an audio guy, which sounds <laughs> kind of retarded because that's what I do. Um, but it makes more sense for me to do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I, I see it actually becoming again you're not going to make a living out of this actually i don't know maybe a fucking thousand years from now you will but you're not gonna make a living out of this no i don't make anything from this you know what i mean i get a couple free beers every now and then i crack some jokes i meet some fun people that's about the extent of what i get out of this um other than you know what i mean i don't know yammering into a camera and you know helping my neurotic craziness um is that it's gonna end up becoming a bit more of a viable kind of avenue for um, for for beer and beer information in general, um, like I said, you're not going to make money out of it. Do you know what I mean? But it's it, it, it's a cool thing to be into. Do you know what I mean? Because it's fun. It, it appeals to the geeky side of me. I'm a production crazy weird person. I have lighting. I have well, I use an iPhone. That's not really that crazy. I like to make things look good, so you know what I mean? It appeals to my side of things. The community is pretty cool. I'm a super introvert. You know what I mean? I really don't talk to a lot of people in the beer tube community. I've met a bunch of them, you know what I mean, in real life, and I've actually hung out with a bunch of them, and I go out of my way to talk to people and they talk to me, but I'm a bit of a weird introvert. You wouldn't expect that, me being such a kind of asshole and so, so and whatnot but um it, it's a super cool community i see people talk all the time and are really into it so it, it's a fun thing um and pretty tight knit not in, in a weird kind of group compared to some other avenues of beer i've seen like the beer community in general is pretty cool you know brewers tend to be super awesome to each other you know what i mean the written word tends to be a little bit more secluded i guess you would say um but uh the beer tube community is a pretty fucking cool thing even though i'm not the biggest fucking voice in that par portion of the show i think it's pretty fucking cool and um yeah it's just uh just don't get into it make thinking you're gonna make money out of it unless it's like i said 100 years from now i'm babbling anyway um so yeah i mean that's pretty much my whole kind of idea and like the whole beer tube thing as far as i see it like i said i'm relative newcomer to it you know what i mean so i've only been doing it a couple of years so there, you know there's people out there that have been doing it infinitely longer than me there's people that have been doing it way more production wise than me you know what i mean like when i first started doing it 
Uh, I was pretty ghetto. Then I kind of got it wrapped up in a little bit of production, had a little watermark in the corner, would do a nice little editing and lighting and stuff like that. Now I just hit record, record, done record, fucking upload. I don't want any production. I want rawness. That's just kind of what turns me on when it comes to beer reviews and beer tubing and shit like that. Actually, this whole fucking editorial thing. This one, particularly, this is like my umpteenth take of this. Not necessarily that I was like, oh, my hair was out of place or whatever. Just It just wasn't there. I just would start recording, get ten minutes in, and be like, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? That's why this one took so long, actually. It's just because I'm just like, I didn't feel it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do something if I don't fucking feel it. And this one, I feel like I'm rambling enough where it kind of makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's... it's it, what's... The synopsis, I guess, I'm pr trying to bring down. I think it's pretty neat because I do it. So since I do it, it's pretty neat. Um, and in all seriousness, uh, I think it's becoming a cool thing. I think there is good information to be had uh, in, in beer tube. I think there's a lot of bad, but there's a lot of good information. And I think it's growing into something that's going to be a little bit more viable in the beer world than it originally was taken for. Um, is that actually what's going to happen? No, but that's what I believe. Um and uh, I think, uh, you know, it, it, it's getting garner a little bit more respect um, from from magazines and, and brewers and whatnot and actually be kind of a viable outlet. Do you know what I mean? Not even just uh, the people that are here. I see a lot of the people that actually do beer reviews or talk about beer in, in, in a written form or from a brewery um, kind of jump into this world and kind of use it as an avenue to kind of um, tell people about their beer. Um, but as long as you have people that are very, you know what I mean, truthful about what they're going to say and are not um, towing the company line, then I think it's something that will grow and it's something uh, pretty fucking cool. And the viewers are fucking awesome. That's probably the coolest thing about this whole thing. I met people, like you said, I've met in a bunch of YouTube uh, reviewers, but I've actually met and hung out with a bunch of actual people that watch my videos. And some of the people I met are some of the coolest fucking people. You know what I mean? So it's just cool to meet like-minded people. And, um, and, you know, for me, it's always been... A weird kind of mixture of, of of kind of those. Let's put it this way. I'll end it. I'll end this portion before I get to the things I hate about YouTube and beer tube. I'll, I'll end it with this. I talked about beer, uh, like beer advocate and rape beer being a aggregate for beer, and YouTube not being that. Um, how I actually view YouTube and how I think I help people. I'm not trying to say I help people. That's just the only word that I can come to mind with. Is um, I'm Pandora for beer. That's it, man. Um, you know what I mean? People will listen to me about beer and go, hey, you know what I mean? Listen to me. And it's like I'm a fucking Pandora channel or Spotify or whatever fucking thing you use. And say, hey, this person likes this beer. I love this beer. And they'll listen to four or five more beers and then go, man, this person loves all the same beers I love. And then this is the importance of putting up beers you fucking hate, because there's a lot of people out there don't do that, and we'll get into that in the hates portion of the show. And it'd be like, wow, this person hated these four fucking beers. Um, and uh, and then go back, they love this one, hated this one, love this one, hated this one. Once you get an actual groove of people, and this is kind of where the viewership comes in, and it's, I think it's pretty cool, is that you end up being like that Pandora, that Spotify for beer. People be like, okay, well, he liked these five things, he hated these five things. Chances are, after... His palate's going to be aligned with mine. I'm going to like the beers that he likes. Okay. You know what I mean? This makes sense. Then you can kind of direct people towards beer. Not necessarily telling people what to drink. Because you should always discover new shit on your own and go out and drink different stuff. But what it does is it takes a fucking really expensive thing, because beer is really fucking expensive... And instead of relying what's written on the side of a bottle, which is always, like, the trailer of a fucking movie that is the best parts of the fucking beer, or what they think are the best parts of beer, sometimes they don't even fucking make sense because they write just shit that doesn't make sense on the side, is that you end up giving a little bit of direction to people who are trying to use their hard-earned money to buy something they enjoy. And then if you can kind of get in tune, if someone's in tune with the same things that you like when it comes to beer and things like that, then you should just kind of fucking help people out along the way. That's kind of how I view it. Um, that's not why I got into it. I just got into it because I'm kind of weird introvert. It's kind of self-absorbed in some form or fashion. But yeah, anyway, that's how I view it. Now, onto the beer tube hates because I hate a ton of shit. And this is probably this is the whole cusp of me doing this. This is actually why I wanted to do this later on um, because I know I was going to hate on a bunch of stuff and I figured I'd just garner a little bit of goodwill with some of these first before I hate on shit. But 
I don't give a fuck. Anyway, first off, lack of originality in YouTube. I hate it. I fucking hate it. I fucking... Everybody does the same shit over and over again. Over and over again. You know what I mean? I actually fucking hate myself because I get in a rut where I say this... Uh, not even say the same, but act the same way. I try not to do it. It just gets a little repetitive sometimes. Even your brain, you can't help it. But everybody does the same fucking exact thing. You know what I mean? Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's doing the same beers over again. I fucking do it too. I'm like literally on the edge of a boycott of specific styles of beer. I, Unless I post... If I post a fucking Hazy New England double IPA or whatever anymore, it's because it's either a backlog video that I had or it's that fucking good I need to tell somebody about it or it's that fucking bad that I need to tell somebody about it. I just don't want to do them anymore. Same thing over and over, over again. So lack of originality in YouTube drives me fucking crazy. Um, fakeness. Fakeness. I hate fucking fakeness. Um, when it comes to things. There's some people out there that talk like this and use a voice and be like, hey, welcome here. Huh? I'm going to talk to you about beer right now and uh, hopefully we do this today. You know what I mean? Like, I hate people that use voices. They're not, obviously not being the person they are. Fucking, you know, the whole laughing at your own jokes. I do it myself, so I hate my fucking self. Um, you know, using the whole stripper voice thing and just being fake in general. You know what I mean? Having, like, set scenarios where you know that thing didn't really actually happen and it actually, oh, this accidentally happened. You know what I mean? I'm doing this thing and, uh, that shit drives me insane. So, that fakeness bullshit, uh, drives me insane. Uh, jump cuts. Jump cuts. Everybody fucking hates jump cuts unless they're for certain shit. Um, jump cuts in a beer review drive me insane. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because if you can't talk without fucking not having to edit a video 73 times that's a fucking problem you should go to school you should whatever there's some people i don't i don't begrudge you when you first get into youtube for doing it because it's a little bit hard to kind of articulate what you're trying to say so whatever but there's some people that can rely on jump cuts because they're trying to produce some kind of weird kind of nine inch nails version of a fucking beer review um and that's fine and there's other people like you know niche you know what i mean she doesn't really do beer reviews she just kind of talks about beer and then talks about news she does jump cuts that's a different fucking thing she's not sitting there actually trying to contemplate on a beer but there's like well, she uses way too many still but <laughs> it doesn't fucking annoy me on that end but it, it, like when it's just non-stop jump cut after jump cut stop it fucking stop it already uh what else do i, I have to write them down how much should i hit um uh oh Old people. I'm old, physically. But the I was on YouTube before everybody else, so I can say everything sucks because I was on YouTube before. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Seriously. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, you know, Jim Thorpe was not the best athlete ever in the history of mankind. You know what I mean? Red Grange wasn't the best football player in the history of mankind. You know what I mean? Like, you know... The, uh, what is it, the the Model T is not the best car that was ever made. Uh, just because you were there first does not mean you fucking are king shit of fuck mountain. You know what I mean? You've been around for a while, you get respect because you get to be OG, but at the same time, do you know what I mean? You, just because you're old and you've been doing it for a while doesn't mean you get to say, oh, oh, I know better because I was on YouTube two years before everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, just stop it because it's just tired and old. Like, the whole argument itself. Um, trying to be a TV show. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's just a personal suit. Oh, these are all personal pet peeves. But that's a big one for me is that, like, I like rawness. I like realism. I like, like, when you smell a beer or you talk about a beer, I like visceral action. Uh, yeah, I love that. I, I love that kind of, ugh. So when you're trying to, like, do so far beyond production where you have sketches and skits and this and that and the other thing, it just doesn't fucking do it for me. Um, yeah. Uh, big one. Open beers. Open beers fucking drive me fucking insane. Insane. Beyond insane. Um, if you're talking about a beer in a way that is visceral. That is reactive. In a perfect world, what I would do in a beer re beer review would be like, open a beer, pour the beer, talk about the beer, drink the beer, talk about the beer, smell the beer, talk about the beer. Sit it down, walk away, come back, about a half an hour, talk about it some more, walk away for an hour or two, 
Come back, talk about it some more. Perfect world. That's what a beer review would be for me. I ain't got time for that shit. And my camera just died, so that wasn't the jump cut. So take that, fuckers. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, the whole, <laughs> the whole uh, uh, letting a beer open up and everything, that's fantastic. But what drives me insane is when somebody is, um, you know, the beer is open. You can see that the, the beer has been poured. There's lacing on the beer already. How, you can see the bottle of the beer or whatever, and it's already obviously the matching. It doesn't match. There's more beer out of that. than, And they talk about it. They smell it, and they, they taste it, and they talk about it like it's this impactful thing that just happened. And, and there's they don't understand how it could be like this because there's no way a beer can be this vibrant. And you'd be like, dude, you were just drinking that motherfucker beer. Don't act like you just upped and started drinking that beer right that second. You know what I mean? You you smelled it. You drank it. You thought about it. Now you're acting like like you just opened it for the first time. That's a lie. So it's, just, it's transparent. You know what I mean? It's part of that whole transparency thing. But yeah, you know what I mean? Stop. Um, let's see what else. Every beer is amazing. That drives me insane. I'm not going to lie. I fall. I do fall for this every now and then. Um, I've been doing it. I want to say I don't do the... I rarely do I get a beer that's fucking horrible. I'm lucky enough to actually have people. And this is kind of a weird thing. And we'll get into a little bit of a, kind of a fucking thing on that too. But um, I get into it to where I want to post amazing beers. But I, I don't post everything I review, and I, sometimes I don't post the, the fucking train wrecks. I try to, though, because you need balance in life for everything. You know what I mean? You can't Everything can't be awesome. If everything's awesome, it isn't awesome. It's normal. It's, it's neutral. You know what I mean? So you can't just say everything's fucking awesome. Um, and that drives me insane. It's almost like everybody, every beer that everybody ever has is awesome. And it pees me off. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I fall in that fucking trap every now and then. I just post, post, post. And I'm like, ah, fucking, I haven't posted a negative review in a while. Not that I want to be negative, but I know there, there's ones that I've done on the negative. So I try to push them out, every, out there every now and then. You have to have a baseline. There can't be bad without good and vice versa. So I hate it when every beer is awesome. And it kind of like, and that's kind of like the, the most first world of first world problems, which was uh, one of the touch on which I thought of just a second ago, is that I'm lucky enough to have a lot of viewers actually send me beers. And when people send you beers, viewers do, or friends, local friends, give me beers and go, oh man, you gotta try this beer to review. No one goes, man, this beer's fucking horrible. I should give this to this guy to the fucking review. A lot of people end up sending their best foot forward when it comes to uh, beers. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's one of those things where we end up, I know I end up doing or reviewing and get a hold of a lot of really good beers too. So it's kind of like that thing where just post some shitty beers, man. Post some shitty beers. Balance. It's all about balance. <sighs> it's all about balance, and it's not all about time constraints, because apparently I like to fucking talk, so. There you go. YouTube and beer. My thoughts on it are not necessarily a fact. Um, probably, a, definitely fiction <laughs> um, in there, but a little bit of both. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, not too shabby. A little bit of notes. A little bit of rambling. That's what you get. Um, so, yeah. Viability in uh, beer. Uh, more specifically YouTube when it comes to uh, beer reviews and YouTube in general. Um, my heats on um, beer tube and uh, there's a lot of other ones too. There's so many terms and words and things and I'm sure people hate me. Fucking hate you doing YouTube. I'm sure people hate that shit. So there you go. Another, uh, another little editorial, little yammering session in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, and talk to me. Tell me if you did or not. Um, I enjoyed doing these even though this one was a bit of a struggle um, to get off. You know what I mean? Um, but still got it off. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down there. Comment stuff. Share. Like. Subscribe. All that fun stuff that gets me all that YouTube cash to make all the money to buy all the things that I don't get because I don't make anything. And uh, <laughs> so hopefully guys enjoyed the subject matter. Hopefully you been enjoying these. Hopefully um, you reach out. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, if you want me to cover things that you don't think I've covered, I have a list, but I want to expand to them. I'm going to try to do them every week. It means I need to come up with 52 things over the next fucking year. So um, write to me. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to cover. Um, tell me uh, where I was wrong, where I was right, where you think BeerTube is as far as its past, present, and future. 
um, and whether you think it's something that's viable when it comes to uh, when it comes to discussing beer and being kind of not necessarily um, high brow when it comes to beer, but being a little bit more in depth, being a little bit more long form outside of your beer advocates and your your rate beers and rate and devs, sorry, and your untaps. Um, and just being a little bit different than the written words. Some people don't dig it. You know what I mean? So let me know what you think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, you keep on watching. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>